So, you know me, I'm here in Vancouver watching Canucks games when they happen. They haven't happened in a while, but hey, this bye week is actually pretty good because for once I feel like a normal human being, not streaming, not making post-game videos, not spending up hours of my time keeping up with this team, just kind of looking at the news and making videos every morning and at lunchtime. It's been a very freeing schedule for me right now, but... You know me, I don't really watch too many Columbus games. It's mostly just Canadian stuff that is over here on the TV. Which is why you can imagine my shock when upon just looking at how the league is going, taking a look at the standings, taking a look at game logs and seeing who's hot and who's not, you take a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets in that central division and you see that they're just behind the Chicago Blackhawks for fifth in the division. Now, losing to Detroit isn't really going to help out your case here, but the Columbus Blue Jackets are in a pretty peculiar spot. And one of the players who is on the Columbus Blue Jackets is so cold that it is absolutely noteworthy to me to make at least a video about it because, yeah, we've spoken about this guy a ton. It's Patrick Laine. Patrick Laine, if you go over to the game log for his season thus far, you can see that a few nights ago against the Carolina Hurricanes, Patrick Laine had himself an assist in what was an overtime loss for the Blue Jackets. A few days before that against the Hurricanes, he had another assist in a shootout win against the Hurricanes. And then on March 11th, he had a goal and an assist against the Florida Panthers when they ended up losing. That was the game that he got benched. However, if you take a look at Patrick Laine's entire game log outside of these three games, what you have yourselves is a guy who, going back to February 25th, so a month ago, Patrick Laine has played 16 games, including the yesterday Detroit Red Wings loss, which happened again, oddly enough. And in these 16 games, he has one goal and three assists. So much for going out there and acquiring what is the next generation's worth of goal-scoring Alex Ovechkin-type power forward, one-timer shot guy. The guy behind Austin Matthews, whose name will forever be linked with Austin Matthews. And as Austin Matthews goes up in terms of his overall point production, Patrick Laine should in theory be right behind him because that's the link these two share. What's going on with Patrick Laine, man? What's going on? Now let's go over onto the Columbus Dispatch because they have an article talking about how the Blue Jackets and Patrick Laine are running out of time to turn things around because there are some quotes that I wanted to go over here. So let's go over onto the article. Let's go over onto what John Tortorella is saying about Patrick Laine. I'm not going to go into the scientific thinking or the deep thinking, Coach Tortorella said Friday before his team's departure for Detroit. I need our players to play better, and Patty is one of them, as we embark on this trip. If you're going to make a stand, and you're going to try to help the team, and you're one of the top players on the team, it's staring you right in the face when we get on this plane today. Here's Patrick Laine's own perspective on the struggling. I try to hide it as much as I can, but sometimes you just absolutely can't. When you're a player who's used to scoring goals, getting points, expecting a lot from yourself, it's the worst situation you can have when you're not producing. So it's tough, but at the same time, you know, you've just got to work the same way and even harder to get out of it. Which I totally understand, because if you take a look at Patrick Laine and the pattern that he has displayed in the NHL when it comes to goal scoring, I mean... What, 36 goals in his rookie year, 40 the next year. He had 30 goals in a down year in 2018-19. And then the next year, he had 30 goals in a significantly fewer amount of games played. As well as more assists, too. Which is why this year, when he's got 9 goals in 27 games, which, I mean, that in itself actually doesn't sound too bad. 9 divided by 27 multiplied by 82. That is a pretty solid 27-goal pace. It's just... That is still the lowest goal per game production rate that Patrick Laine would display in his entire career. And the fact is, getting one goal and three assists in 16 games for the past month, that's not great either. This article that I'm reading from goes over the idea that John Tortorella wanted to project over onto Patrick Laine. Torts wants to see Laine attack the game with his skating, changing games as a power forward while Patrick Laine feels more comfortable roaming around the offensive zone, seeking spots to launch his booming shot. 
Asked whether the Jackets' attempt to turn him into a power forward was hindering his offensive output, Line A didn't exactly squash the notion. Very nice writing, by the way, I like that. I've never really been a guy who's just playing in the corners and behind the net too much, said Line A, who was 6'4", 201. Usually, I've just been a high guy in the offensive zone, looking for openings where I can maybe receive the puck and try to shoot it, since that's probably what I'm good at. But you know, you've still got to do those other things. But I don't know the answer. It's a tough one. And this is kind of another one of these examples where I take a look at how exactly a player is being developed and asking myself, is that the proper way for him to be developing? Because when it comes to that link with Austin Matthews, I think a lot of people can say, if Austin Matthews wanted to be, he could very well be another one of these power forwards that totally just changes the game with his size. He's a big boy. He can go out there, do his thing. He's not afraid to shove guys off of him when he's carrying the puck to the net. Austin Matthews is a versatile center who can do it all. Patrick Laine never really displayed that same ambition, but that's not a bad thing. That's just kind of how Patrick Laine plays. As he says, Patrick Laine to me was never really the take the puck, charge down the wing, and head to the net force a guy off of him, cut into the middle, and score on a backhand. He was never that kind of guy. He was always just, I'm going to be here, not with the puck. You guys can hold on to the puck. And when you guys want this puck to be in the back of the net, you throw it to me, and I shoot it on goal, and it goes in. That's my role on this team. You know, people always talk about, oh, this is why Connor McDavid isn't the best player in the world because he's so bad defensively. This is why McKinnon is a lot better, and this and that. And... It's all about roles, you know? It's all about player roles. Do you go out there and say, okay, because Patrick Laine is built like this, we're going to go out there and expect him to be a power forward. We're going to go out there and expect him to do these things, which he hasn't really had to do before, because before, in the Liga level and in the Winnipeg Jets system, he could get away with scoring 40 goals in a year because, hey, he would score 40 goals in a year. He doesn't need to be this power forward-like guy. It's the same argument with Connor McDavid. Do you say that Connor McDavid is an inferior hockey player to Nathan McKinnon because Nathan McKinnon is a lot more defensively sound and a lot more defensively engaged? It's not the role that McDavid plays to be one of these players where he's back-checking and playing on the penalty kill and doing the two-way game and all that. You throw Connor McDavid out there to score a hat trick every night, and when he does that, that's a win. Now, you could say, oh, but that whole play style hasn't really led the Oilers anywhere, and I guess you'd be right, but still, for Patrick Laine, it's the same kind of argument. Is this the best for his development going forward in terms of being an overall hockey player? Probably. But is it actually going to work? It's been a month of this, and Patrick Laine has only scored one goal. What's going to happen next year when Patrick Laine needs a contract and all of these big drama negotiations that we had over the past year just persist even further? He's making $6.75 million as an AAV for this season. Is he going to get more than that? Is he going to go long term? I've been seeing speculation that the Blue Jackets are going to go out there and sign him to a one year extension because of course they will. They'll just delay the inevitable long term contract that Patrick Laine was setting up for himself ever since he was in the Winnipeg system with all those controversies and rumors going about as to whether or not he was going to leave. But now things haven't been better in Columbus. It really puts a picture in your mind. OK, would this have happened if it wasn't a flat cap world, if we didn't have this pandemic going around, if Patrick Laine was just traded to another team that didn't have Tortorella out there wanting to make this guy into a power forward. And again, I don't watch too many Columbus games. So Blue Jackets fans, you can go down there, talk to me in the comments what exactly is going on with Patrick Laine, because this story is just so peculiar and weird to me that I'm just super engaged in seeing how it goes down. Hopefully long term, Patrick Laine can still be that Maurice Richard caliber 45 goals in his sleep kind of guy because we need more goal scoring in the game. You know, I'd love to see more goal scoring. So for Patrick Laine, talk to me in the comments. What's going on with this guy? One goal, three assists, 16 games played. The Blue Jackets, they've lost twice to Detroit in regulation and they're just barely outside the playoff hunt. So that Dubois trade is really working out well for them now, isn't it? Tell me in the comments if you think I've enjoyed this video of Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>